Hello, welcome back to Furious Driving. And this today is a reveal. Yeah, I've got another one. I need another project like I need a hole in their head. But sometimes these things fall in your lap and you can't really say no, can you? Because, well, because, well, I think you can probably see the alloys and you can probably guess what this is. Should we do a big reveal? Shall I whip it off like it's a car show and it's gonna be exciting? Yeah, go on, let's do that. One, two, three. Of course it's a Rover. <laughs> Not any Rover 200. It's a soft top, a Rover 200 convertible. I've never had one of these before. So here it is, it's my, I think it's silver, 1995 216, I think it's an SI, convertible, which for the money isn't in bad condition. Uh, it's got a couple of issues. Apparently the alternator broke and seized completely about seven years ago, snapping the alternator belt, at which point it was parked with the windows down and the roof down. Now, I don't know if that's because the roof mechanism had broken or because the battery went flat when they're trying to drive it. So let's have a look around and see what I've got. This car cost me 100 pounds, which is a fair price for what is quite a tidy, well spec car. We'll walk through the spec in a second. Shipping cost me another 150 pounds. So the car is me 250 pounds to get it here. Yes, the shipping cost more than the car. It was quite a long way away to be fair and it was a very good deal on Shipley. I've already bought a battery because I can't do anything without that. That was another 40 odd pounds. So we're into about 300 quid so far. I quite like a convertible in the summertime. You've got the blue sky, the birds tweeting, the sun and up there, the wind in your hair, well, maybe not me, but uh, I like a convertible, but I don't know if a really convertible is for me, so I think I'm gonna get to a point where it's MOT, drivable, hopefully roof working, and flip it on, then I can put some money towards the Rover V8, the Mercedes uh, engine, one of the other many, many projects. So, it, realistically, I don't see it as a keeper, I see it as a, a thing to, to do and move on. So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna avoid falling in love and keeping it. It's not another Volvo. Right, let's pop the bonnet and look around this car. So here at the front, we have got the facelift front bumper, which is quite smart. Only a little bit of peeling paint. Unfortunately, we do have a bullet chipped headlight, but I don't think that's an MOT fail because the Volvo has something very similar on its MOT, no problem. Uh, the paint has got a bit of, I don't know, it may, may polish out, maybe in the lacquer. I think it's probably in the lacquer uh, where it's been under a cover for so long. The tyres have definitely seen better days by a long way. Uh, only a tiny bit of bubbling on that wing. Mouldings are nice, got tinted glass because it's a high spec convertible. Uh, this arch has gone in the usual places. Um, around the back, bumpers faded but not scratched or scuffed like that corner on the front. A little bit of surface rust just here, which isn't too bad. A little bit of flaking lacquer, as always. And this is the surprise. I knew it had a rusty wing. Oops, someone's popped a van where they shouldn't have done. Um, yeah, this is um, not good. This bumper isn't actually hanging off, or is hanging off, but only because the wing behind it has gone rotten and so the, the fixing point has rotted off. So once that wing is replaced, these are a cheap replacement. I found them on eBay for about 25 quid, but expensive delivery, so I'll keep on hunting. I expect to get one of those fairly inexpensively. They always seem to wind up with a scrape down here on this corner. Check out this interior. This is all leather. This is absolutely lovely. Got the leather steering wheel. Got the, uh, the later bubble Rover 200 dash. Nice bit of wood, aftermarket stereo. And the leather is a bit, bit uh, faded, or it's sort of scuffed up on the driver's side. But not too bad. This is a proper leather pad here in the door. And that will, the clips have come off, but I can reclip that or glue it if necessary. It's even got mirrors in the sun visors. Some better than others. Make some glue on that one. Here's the B. The tonneau cover is quite nice, but the hood is wedged down. I can't get into the boot at the moment, um, so I can't tell if I can even manually raise this, which is an issue. And the fabric looks like it's probably okay, but the frame looks really manky. So I don't know if, mm, that's probably not a positive thing. Now in the boot, if I could get to it, there is a manual release, so I could pull this up and have a look, but 
can't get into the boot at the moment. And the window looks all right though. Here's the question, do I save this car or break it for the parts? Because the more I look at it, the more I think is wrong with it. Right, let's pop the bonnet, have a look underneath and then see if we can get anything to work with a new battery in it. Oop. The usual on the bonnet crust is present. It does look a bit dusty and uh, spider webby. Well, the coolant looks all right. Decent level. Get that new head and head gasket not long before it's parked up. This does look like an engine that's been sat for a long time. So here's where the battery was. I did take the battery home. Um, I stuck it on a charge, it was registering nothing at all. I did my Sam Crack trick of hooking it to a better battery um, and then hooking them both to a charger. And it seemed to take about 11 and a half volts, but the moment I disconnected the better battery, it, the readout was literally dropping whilst it was charging. So I've got a new one in the boot of the Mercedes. Um, look at this thing, look at this, this is terrifying. It is dead, it's just blowing in the wind, but I want that nowhere near me. That's horrible. Uh, weird mold on this pipe here, lovely. And here is the busted alternator, which is seized solid. It's a little ditty battery. I'm surprised how tiny the battery is. And I thought it looked small when I took it out of the car. I thought maybe it was the wrong one, but this is the correct battery going by the number plate. And I'm not going to do any kind of resto work on it today. I'm just literally trying stuff to see what happens. That's weird, even the curtsy light's dead. Let's see what state the oil is in. Ugh. Oh, it's got half a dipstick. That's super helpful. There is a bit of scribble on the uh, timing belt cover, which says 57908, so we'll call it 58,000 miles, which I think is be the last time the timing belt was done. And it currently has 82,000 miles. So it's only 25,000 miles on this timing belt, but it is quite old. So we'll see, we'll think about changing that. We'll see how we go. Apparently the head gasket was done not long before it was parked up, so the head skim as well. In fact, looking at that, it looks like quite a clean deck under there. So it may actually have had another timing belt since that. So it may even be newer than that. What do we think the chances are of the remote working after all this time? Yeah, as I figured, zero. Okay, let's try, let's try the lock. Oh, central locking works. That means maybe I can open the boot. Nope. No. Why can't I get into the boot? If I can't get into the boot, I can't get into the manual override for the roof. Now in theory, you're meant to be able to turn off the immobiliser using the key in the door on a Rover R8 series car. So insert the key into the lock. Turn it to lock. Okay, that's the right unlock. I hold for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five, and some elephants. Turn the key to unlock position the required number of times. Turn the key to the lock position. Then to the unlock. And then lock. And then unlock the door. Let's see if it starts. I don't know what oil's in it because the dipstick is broken. It's in neutral. Oh, the lights come on. Uh, and so did the immobiliser. Let's try the uh, roof anyway. Oh, tonneau's on. It works. No, it doesn't. It almost works. Everything's released, isn't it? It's very stiff. Oh my gosh. Oh, rotten as a pair. But if I can get the roof up, it'll stop the interior being damaged. I can hear the motor going, but nothing's happening. Ah, oh, so it nearly works. It goes that far. Oh well. I've got electrical windows. Yes, it'd be nice if the windows are up. My main thing here now is I need to get into the boot. That is a big problem for me now. Oh, the radio has gone up. KT Tunstall CD with mold on. 
Okay. So I'm going with the hood is broken and needs replacing no matter what. So a quick recap. It needs a front wing, four tires, uh, a new hood, complete assembly, some means of getting into the boot because those keys don't work on it, and the immobilizer won't come off. Yay. Right, okay, I'm gonna take the battery home and recharge it. My brand new battery is now half flat, probably from putting windows up and trying that roof. It may just be that it's out of fluid, but that whole front end bit is just rusty as anything, so we'll walk away from that for the time being. Okay, recharge battery, cup of tea, biscuits. So I've come up to somewhere in the middle of the country to collect a new roof for the uh, problem child convertible. Well, the frame anyway. Yeah, nice fabric's been taken off and hopefully my fabric is gonna be as nice as this when I get home. Well, we're here, we've found a Nightfire Red front wing, which looks like it might be better than the one on the car. I'm not taking it off because we're keeping cross-contamination of tools down to one person. It's standing well back. And we'll see in a second if this Nightfire <laughs> wing. <laughs> we'll see if this wing is any good or not. <laughs> now these are Rover R8 Filonex. These are behind the fuel cap on your Rover R8 if you have one of them. And they always go rotten, like this one here. And the reason I'm here today is because a gentleman called Chris is refurbishing these and making them look basically like brand new. If you got a good one to start with, it comes back looking better than new. A car he'd been braking had got a really nice hood frame, but he is now currently stripping some more out of some other Rovers so he can prepare these for other people in the Rover community. If they're not great to start with, they come out like this, but that's still rust free, rust prevented, and can last a long, long time. If you need one of these, there's some details in the uh, description below. Uh, people in the Rover community may have seen photos of this uh, collection before. There are cars here that are runners, there are cars here that are projects waiting to be done up, there are cars here that are just in long-term storage, and there are cars here that are donors for others to be just kept on the road from. For example, this uh, Amaranth Coupe. Missing its front bodywork, but the bodywork is around it, and it's not that rusty, so this may well be a project. three-door GTI. I'd love a three-door GTI. There's a couple of tourers around here as well. Several convertibles, some of which are donors, having bits taken off them, and other parts which are... other cars. If you like Rover R8s, this is an amazing sight. This is the... Um, the red convertible, which just gave me a wing. Many more cars. This one looks, this one's got a question mark over it. It's a very solid car that was in dry storage for years. But in dry storage, secure paid for storage, he got smacked by something very hard indeed. So it's a good solid car with a smashed up side. So that one may well be restored soon. Everyone loves an estate car, they're the coolest things. Amaranth, an Amaranth Tourer, 420 Tourer would be awesome. There's an idea for the future. Even a lonely bubble. What model are you to the bubble? Last on the road in 2013. You are just a basic 200, just a basic 200, no clue. I really like these. See, these gave a curvy dashboard to the later R8s, like my convertible. T-shelf. I check out the colour on this thing, it's iridescent. Apparently they sold 15 cars in this colour. 
So, this has been a productive morning. I've got an alternator, I've got a dipstick, got the hood frame, and hopefully it might just be the header rail that we can replace without replacing the entire hood and everything, but a really good uh, headlining inside this if we do go that way. Got a new wing, it's not perfect, but it was only a couple of quid because there's a tiny bit of rust in there and it needs painting anyway, so hopefully we can sort that one out, make it really nice. So basically most of the bits we need to bring this old uh, cabriolet back up to looking up to scratch, up to snuff. Okay, so I'm back from a successful parts and knowledge hunting mission. I've now got the new hood frame, and if I'm really, really lucky, it might just turn out that all I actually need is the front bar that's rotted out of the, my, my hood here, and this one is all salvageable, and I'm not gonna completely strip down the, uh, this hood here and rebuild it. Let's, let's hope. I've got a new alternator, I've got a new dipstick. That was a weird thing to ask for. And obviously the battery you've seen already, and also I've spoken to the previous owner, and now I've got what I hope is the correct code for the immobilizer so we can see if this thing cranks over. I've also been shopping down at the service items shop and I've got a boot of stuff in the car, oil filter, timing belt kit, um, what else have I got? I think I've got a water pump, uh, oil fuel filter, I'm going to change these, uh, actually those look alright actually, I might get away with that, change the wiper blades, I might, might not get them. But yes, so today as it's uh, kind of getting on a bit, I'm going to quickly see if this new code works and then change the oil and then I think we might call it a day and say we've now got a car which is a project and see where we go from there. Okay so having uh, last time I came here bolted the battery in properly and then when I went home took the battery back home to recharge that was a bit of a waste of time but well the horn didn't go last time I'll see if the key just turns this time. No, do still need the immobiliser code. I saw it's got plastic here on the side when I was here last time, and I did not know what that was. Um, I spoke to the previous owner, it turns out when the car broke, when the alternator seized up all those years ago, the RAC guy came out, checked the oil, and somehow managed to snap the uh, dipstick off. Thankfully, not in the tube, it's here on the side. So now I've got a new dipstick. I'll quickly check the oil before I turn it over. So here we have, aha, a new, not broken dipstick. Wee. See if there's any oil in this car at all. Yeah, there is. It's bang on the line. It's quite dark and horrible having been sat around for so long, but at least it's got some in there. Uh, I'm not going to run it with that though. I have brought an oil filter with me, so I will change that. Now, first of all though, let's do the, the Cody thing in the door. Just double checking I'm doing this right. So turn the key clockwise, lock in position, and hold it for at least five seconds. One elephant, two elephant. Uh, first digit, turn the key fully as far as it can go anti-clockwise. So I'll do that now. Second digit, turn the key fully as far as it go clockwise. Anti-clockwise. Fourth digit, turn the key clockwise again. Turn the key to unlock. Cross my fingers and yours too. Damn it. That's bad news. Okay, let's do it one more time. No. Damn you, car. I'm not quite sure what else I can do about that, to be honest, because I've tried the code that came in the book. I've tried the code the guy sent me who had the car before and had it written down elsewhere, and neither of those two wants to play. So, next option is to replace this and get a new key fob. Um, new remote key, new MEMS, and code it to the car, uh, which is a bit of an extreme option, but if it's the only thing we can do to get the car going, we might just have to do that. <sighs> the other problem I've got, I've now I kind of confirmed, is that because the key isn't working in the boot lock, that's the only way in. So what I'm gonna have to do is take the back seat out as well, because I can't get the boot open and I can't change the hood without, or I can't over manually override the hood to lift the hood without getting into the boot of this car. I was gonna change the oil, I'm, oh, I should change the oil as well. That's really annoying. The car is seriously fighting me now. Because the tyres are flat, I can't actually get whoops, a jack underneath it. That's very, 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 very annoying. And because the engine doesn't start, I can't drive it onto a block of wood, which is very, 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 very annoying. I might come to hate this car quite soon. Oh, forget it. I'm taking the battery home again, so if this car gets towed away and scrapped, 
I lift my nice new battery safe. I'll have one more look at the boot and then I'm going to go and have a cup of tea. Unfortunately, it does look like this car has had exactly the same problem as every R8 I think I've ever seen, pretty much, in that someone has missed the jacking point, which is the larger solid lump of metal just there, or the big lump of metal immediately behind it, and just jacked it up on this seam here, which is like where the sill and the floor pan meet, which does the cars no favours whatsoever. Right, okay, so this is the only access to the boot and also the only way of accessing the hood as well. So let's try this as much as I can, giving it any kind of sensible wobblage. This is a genuine Rover key with a wobbly bit in it. I can hear the lock turning, but it's just not doing anything. It's not releasing, which means I've got to get those seats out. Those seats don't come out. So it squabs out, backs out, crawl through, release the boot. So welcome to Project Easy Flip. This is the car I'll have turned around in a week and making a quick tidy profit for summertime. It's going well already. When I first got this car, I was thinking there's a good chance I'll break it for the part. This kind of dark gray leather would look awesome in the Tomcat. I think I can use that in the coupe, sell the rest of the car to kind of pay for itself and I've got a free leather interior. But then I saw the car, I thought, no, it deserves a second chance. Now I've kind of spent a fair bit more money on service items, new hood frame, a spare wing, all that kind of stuff. I'm kind of committed at this point, and I think, frankly should be committed, because uh, now I'm sort of struggling more and more. I'm thinking, actually, it would have been a far better idea just to steal the nice leather and stick it in the Tomcat. Never mind. We'll see how we go. So join me over the next few weeks where I try and turn this car around from a rusting wreck that sat for six years on someone's drive into a beautiful bit of summer motoring fun um, and see if I can turn a profit out of it as well. well. I love the idea of a convertible Rover. I've driven one, I enjoyed it, but I like the idea of convertibles more than I like the actuality. So I don't think I'll keep this one because convertibles are, just aren't really me. I, I like them. But if it does fight me all the way, then uh, yeah, perhaps it will become just a donor for the Tomcat. I hope not, no. It seems too nice. To, to just yeah, part it out for such a simple reason as the fact that I can't get any parts off it, the roof's broken, I can't get into the boot and the engine doesn't work. Anyway, you know all the stuff to do. Like, subscribe, share on Facebook, share in owners groups, that kind of stuff. If you've enjoyed watching this, then do all those kind of things. If you want to help support the channel, there's three ways you can do it so I can keep on the momentum on these things because these stupid projects are not cheap. You can join Patreon. You can become a channel member. In both those cases, very occasionally, you get little sneak previews and extra videos. Not very often, though. I like to keep everything out in the open and tend to put everything out in the open anyway in the end. Or hit one of the links and buy yourself a Rover or Furious driving sticker and make something look very cool indeed. Anyway, see you next time. Oh, by the way, more stuff has turned up for the Black Rover, so carrying on with the V8 later this week, and hopefully the W123 as well. Take care, everyone. I'll see you soon.